We're going to talk a little bit about sets today. Before we talk about that, though, I want to review some basic concepts from array lists and lists that we did in CSA. So did we ever create an array list like this? Do you see anything wrong with what the way Mr. Sarkar has uh, created this array list? OK, you, you cannot put uh, primitives inside an array list. So you got to use the wrapper class. And we got to use that here as well. Let me make some notes here while we go. Uh, array lists cannot store primitives. Can anyone guess what else cannot store primitives? Sets cannot store primitives. In fact, if I go back to this picture, if I go back to this picture, basically everything here requires a object uh, for, uh, for to be the element. You can't have primitives for any of these things. They all hold objects. They don't hold primitives. That's a common theme for everything on this page. Got it? So in the same way that an array list could not hold a, a primitive, the sets that we're going to talk about today also cannot hold primitives. Now, the other thing is that we usually did not declare array lists on both sides of the equal sign. What did we used to put on the left side of the equal sign in CSA? Does anybody remember? Or maybe I learned it, I showed it to you in uh, data structures first. So instead of putting array list here, we usually put list here. And the reason we did that was why? Do you remember, Mr. Frederick? Yes. So basically, we can come along and change the type of list on this side a little bit easier later. And going forward, the data, going forward, the data variable is limited to calling only list methods because it's declared to be of type list. Similarly, when we, oh, one more thing I've got to show you here. This is the right way to declare an array list. Sometimes programmers get lazy and they do not repeat this part here. And when the compiler sees this, it assumes that the data type for this array list is going to be the same as the data type for this list. And since I am a lazy programmer, I'm going to, from now on, declare it this way without specifying the same exact data type here. So now we have the basic definition for an array list, and you will see now that the strategy for sets is extremely similar. So am I going to do this, hash set int? I want you to try and rewrite this sentence now to follow the rules that we said here for the array list. Let's say we have a set of integers. What's wrong with it? There are three things I need you to change in this line number 11 that I just wrote. Mr. Mulcahy, can you tell me one thing that needs to be changed here, sir? I need to use wrapper classes. What's another thing that I need to change? Mr. Amrani, and now what is the last thing that I have the option of doing? Yes, Ms. Mila? Okay, I'll be lazy and remove it here. And uh, I'm going to import all these uh, statements here. This auto import thing is, I think if that's a new feature from BlueJay, I don't remember that being there last couple of years. Maybe it was, I don't know. Okay, so now you see we've created our hash set. Now I would like you underneath here to create a tree set using the same strategy. All right, so we have ability to create a hash set and a tree set. We're not going to look at the tree set very much today. I promise to look at that next time. The hash set is a little bit simpler to use because there's no ordering involved or sorting, I should say. So let's try and add a few pieces of information to our data, uh, our hash set called data2. And then let's ask the system if there's a certain something or other inside the set or not. So I would like you to add the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 to this set. See if you can guess how to add them. We're going to get to all that eventually, I promise. Ms. Mila is asking if there are shortcuts for doing it all on one line. So now we're going to print the set. And you'll notice that just like the array list, the set has a nice two string built in. So we don't have to loop it or anything. We can just throw the whole set into a print statement and it'll print. And there's our set. If I do this, when I run it again, what will print? Let's see who's been paying attention. Uh, who has not helped me today? I think everyone has helped me. He says only one, two, three, four will print. How come these other fours are not going to print, sir? Can't have duplicates in a set. 
Do you think I'll get a runtime error for trying it? That would be too harsh. So you can see it only has one instance of the four because it doesn't allow duplicates. And Ben asked the question, does it tell us if it's successfully added? And I don't know the answer. So let's see here, Java set add method. Yes, sir, you are correct. It's a Boolean and it tells you whether it was successfully able to add it or not. Now, Mila asked earlier, oh, let's, before I get to Mila's question, I want to know, I want to know, is there a seven in my data set? How do I ask the set, do you have a seven in it? I'm asking it, does it have a seven? And you can see it does not have a seven. What is the big O of this operation? It's O of one or O of K, it's really fast. Let's run this now. So you can see that this worked. So what does that mean now about a hash set? Could I do this? Look, could I do this? Data dot add. And this is an array list you see I'm working with, right? And now could I do this? Could I do that? What do you think? Okay, Ms. Hila, what do you think? It does. The original array list is not touched though. And if this particular array list happened to have duplicates in it, the duplicates will go away now. And you can see the duplicates have gone away. And now, yes, Mila? Yes. So what you're going to do now is we can convert it back to a list. And the reason you might want to do that is this is a great way to eliminate duplicates from a list. You could turn it into a set and then turn it back to a list. And I'm going to ask you now in the few minutes that remains, try to figure out here, I've created the array list. Here, I've turned it into a set, figure out how to bring it back into, uh, into the array list, and then you're done for the day. This technique that we're using to convert from a list to a set and then back to a list again will not preserve the original order because when you convert to a set, you're going to lose the order. So if it's important to you to keep the original order of the array list untouched, you cannot use this technique to convert, to get rid of your duplicates.